Hi, it's Tim Cole, and I want to talk to you about the subject of revelation and receiving from God things that don't fit our grid and how important that is. There are some danger zones, of course, when we start talking about revelation and receiving revelation that don't belong in any grid that we have or we've been taught. Um, certainly everything lines up with and is processed through what the principle of the word uh, is that, that we have in front of us every day. And it's important that we parse all revelation through this. But I, I just want to challenge you with the words of Jesus uh, to his disciples and to the crowd, actually, who were following him after he fed the 5,000. Uh, he's talking about him himself being the bread of life and, of course, the manna from heaven. And that was challenging to them because they had such a high value for Moses and for the stories that have been told to them about what God did in the wilderness and how he fed them every day with manna. And so this was really challenging to them. And John chapter 6 in verse 40, we find that Jesus says, For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son, that is himself, and believe in him, should have eternal life. What a great message. I will raise them up in the last day. Verse 41, then the people began to murmur in disagreement because he had said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Again, they were caught up in what they knew and they had such a high value for the re revealed, um, the things that have already been revealed, the revelation that had already come to them through the manna in the wilderness, the physical manna, that when God, when God through the Son was bringing a different revelation, there was a higher revelation, actually the more, most important revelation. What they had believed as revelation was just a type and a shadow. But who he was was the fulfillment. He was the reality, right? He, he, he was the, the real deal that all of that spoke of. But when he began to un, uncover that revelation to them, they balked, they murmured, and they complained in disagreement because he said, I am the bread from heaven. In verse 22, they said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph, Joseph who we know his father and his mother? How can he say, I came down from heaven? And I just want to challenge you, I, I, again, understanding that all revelation is processed through this. I want to challenge you that there are, we have not yet been where God is taking us. So it's very dangerous for us to allow what we know to become the boundary for what God wants us to know. You understand what I'm saying? If we are so, if we grab a hold of the revelation that has been given to us in the past, so tightly as if to let it create the boundary of what we know and what we're comfortable, what we believe in and what we're going to fight for, then we will be at risk for missing the new that God wants to bring to us in the season we're now entering into. In fact, it's true that the old, uh, the, the old um, revelation, the old manifestation the old releasing of the kingdom from the old guard from the last season or the last generation most often is the mortal enemy of the new generation and the new revelation and the new revival that breaks out in the planet. They're one and the same and they come from one and the same God. But what is it about the old generation that causes them to rise up and uh, become um, anti the new generation and anti what God is doing in the new generation? It's this principle, the idea that what we know can become the worst enemy of what we want to know or what God wants us to know in the new season. Now, again, I understand there, there are challenges here. If we're not in community, community is a, is a safety for us. Listen, we have the mind of Christ. He doesn't say, I have the mind of Christ. He said, Paul said, we have the mind of Christ. Community, there's safety in the community where things are parsed. And even in 1 Corinthians 4 or 14, we, we get the revelation that even prophecy is to be judged, right? So new revelation in that context comes where we'll let, we'll let a prophet prophesy and let two or three other prophesy and let, let the other prophets judge, right? There's a context of community that keeps us safe when we're handling new revelation. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this concept that the, the crowd actually began to leave Jesus because of the discussion of manna. They couldn't let their previous understanding of revelation go. It was such a hard and fast boundary that they refused the new revelation that God wanted to bring to them. And I, I want to suggest another point here. Do you understand that, that the New Testament church only had the Old 
Testament, the Law and the Prophets, as a written Word of God to go on. And if they had only stuck to the, what they knew by revelation of the Old Covenant, they would not have walked out the New Covenant. You see, it took someone standing up on the day of Pentecost to say, this is that. When Joel prophesied, and the Spirit of the Lord is going to be poured out on all flesh, and your daughters, and your when he prophesied, see, that, that was ingrained in Israel's psyche, and yet when prophetic words come, when, when past revelations come, it becomes formed in our minds the way we receive it, the way we think it. And we groove these grooves, and, and if it doesn't come that way, we're, temp- we're, we're very seriously in jeopardy of missing it when it does come. And so when it came at the book of Acts, Peter stood up and, this is that, this is that, later on, this is that, right? There's a, an interpretation of what, what the past revelation, which was just a shadow and a type, what it actually comes to mean as revelation continues to be unfolded. So I want to challenge you to be open today, to go beyond what your current revelation will allow. And it's holding more tightly onto the one who is truth than the truth that the one has given me, if that makes sense. See, I'm more in love with Jesus than I am with what I know that Jesus has said to me. I'm grateful for what he said. It's brought faith to me. It's, it's the anchor of my life. It's brought hope to me. It, his words are life. I get it. But that life is, comes from the life of God. And it can't be separated from God himself. And so it's God that I love. I, I, just, I think of Abraham who left his, his uh, family and he moved into the, the, the land of what would future become the land of Israel. I think of Abraham, and it says that he believed God and was credited to him as righteousness. Do you know he was going where he'd never been before? And in order to go where you've never been before, you've got to be open to what you've never known before. You've got to be willing to have new revelation come to you so that God can speak to you now what is, is appropriate today in your life. And in this season and in this environment, which is probably different than your last season and your last environment. So let me just encourage you. You're living a great day to be alive. Break out of, don't allow what he said to you yesterday or the revelation of yesterday to become the prison of today. Understand that, that line upon line, precept upon precept, understand that there's this glory to glory that's unfolding in your life. And the more you are fixated on him and he is your highest value, you're not releasing or giving up the truths that have come in the past. They still remain, but you're allowing them to build on top of those and to cause shadows and types that you knew before from those previous revelations to become the fullness that he's meant them to be. And so move on with God and don't be stuck in what you know. They said, isn't this, we know who this guy is. He's, he's Joseph's son. He's Mary's son. I mean, how can he be saying these things? And they allowed what they knew to be a prison, to imprison them and keep them from what God wanted them to know. Dear ones, I want to tell you that God has some great things by way of revelation in store for you. And those revelations will be the key to unlock your present season and circumstances. I challenge you, come out of this love affection and a love affair with the, the, with truths and, and fixate your love affair on the one who is true. And you'll never be stuck holding yesterday's manna when there's fresh manna for you today.